In my last Swift Playgrounds video, I made a tour of the new features of Swift Playgrounds. The new features are meant for use with Swift UI, but does that mean you can't make apps with UI Kit on it? The answer may surprise you. Using UI View Representable, you can embed UI Kit code into Swift Playgrounds. So let's make an app that embeds a UI navigation controller and two view controllers to show you how this works. I'm going to start with a blank Swift Playground. So I'm going to just hit the app button here and pick up an app. Now I'm going to just go into the app for this one. And I get a import Swift UI for the content view. I'm going to close the preview here and I'll open up the files here. And we've got two files here, the content view and my app. Going into my app here, you could see that the app is actually run by launching one view, which in this case is content view. And we could change content view to something else. In this case, a UI view controller representable, which is a protocol that creates from a UI kit view controller, a view. So I'm just going to replace that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into content view to start this, and I'm going to select my code here and delete it so we can start from scratch here. I'm also going to add some code. So I'm going to hit the button on top for inserting, and I'm going to go to insert from, and I have on GitHub some extra code for the two view controllers so we don't have to type them all out. And I'm going to go ahead and select these guys. And you can download them and unzip them and get them ready to do this if you would like to do that as well. And I'm going to hit open here. And now I have a detail view controller and a view controller. And you can see, yep, it's it's a view controller. Okay, and same thing here. Now, I'm going to go back into content view. And we're going to start to add code here. The first thing I'm going to add is a struct. And I'm going to call this struct navigation view controller. And this is going to be of type UI view controller representable. Now, as you see here, we're going to get that does not conform to protocol because this is a protocol. There are two parts to that protocol that you need to have. And I'm going to add the first one, which really doesn't do anything for our purposes. And that's going to be func update UI view controller. And that'll be an underscore UI view controller. And that's a UI view controller type. And it has something called a context, which is of type context. And this is if you were to have this view controller change things. If it had a delegate, is really where it comes into play. And we don't have one, so it's going to actually do nothing because we're going to make this our root view controller. So there's nothing above it. And with that done, I'm going to make the next one, which is really the important one. And it actually makes our view controller that it will then turn it into a view. And so we're going to do that with func make UI view controller. And that'll be a context of context. And that returns some UI view controller. And you could be more explicit here besides just saying UI view controller if you have a specific one. But I keep it pretty generic for what I'm doing here. Okay, and then inside the braces, I'm going to initialize a view controller I'll be using. So I'm going to do that let VC for view controller equal, and that's going to be view controller. And underneath that, I'm going to make my navigation controller. Okay, and that nav controller equals UI navigation controller root view controller. I'm going to put in there VC. for my view controller, okay? And then what I'm gonna to do to that is return it. So I've embedded the view controller inside of nav controller, which is my UI navigation controller, and then I return that. And so I now have a perfectly good view controller here. 
Now, next step I'm going to do is go back over here to my app, and you can see it says cannot find content view and scope. That's because we deleted it. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that and put in its place our new navigation view controller. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what I did with the view controller before we do anything else. And pretty much what this is, is a bunch of stack views that I put a bunch of buttons and things in. What I do want to point out here is that in code, you're going to be pushing and popping your view controllers. So make sure you know how to do that. And again, let's go look at this code a little closer. And you can see here in the middle, here on line 31, that I have in the UI action for my buttons, that I have a navigation controller, push view controller, and then I push the view controller there. And that view controller is two lines up where I initialize it, and then I set its properties, and then push it out to make this view controller. And on the other side of this, if you want to look over here at detail view controller, I've done something similar here in the dismiss action in the UI action here. And that one will pop the view controller. And again, I set it for animated true. So that's what we've got going here. Now I can go over here to my app. I'm going to go close this up and pull on the preview. And all of a sudden it works. That's all you need because the my app is still a Swift UI view. It's going to launch this and it's actually going to work. You can actually push the button four here and there it goes. It navigates over. As you see on top, you've got a back button. So the navigation is working. I'll do button three here and there goes three. And I can dismiss this with a tap and there we go. So I've got it working quite well here. So you can code UI kits on your iPad. The only drawback I've found is autocomplete does not work. It starts to freak out when you start using UI kit in here. And as you've noticed, I haven't had any uh, autocomplete while I've been doing any of the code here. If you need a workaround, you might use one of the original Swift playgrounds to write a view controller and then copy and paste it into your app. I also found that if I put a method in and not use the parameters, I could use the fix for the error to get the parameters in and quickly get those into place. Okay. Finally, you can go ahead and run the app as a full app. So I can go ahead and hit run, and there it is. And I can go hit button one here, and there comes button one. I can dismiss it, and there it goes, and it's gone. I can go hit button two, and I can dismiss that too. So it's working. And uh, we can do other things with this as well. I'm going to shut it off here. But yeah, you can now just keep writing things onto that navigation controller all you want for all that matters and just need that small amount of code to get it to work. That's UI Kit in Playgrounds 4. If you want to learn more about the techniques I used in this, take a look at the iOS Development Tips Weekly in the LinkedIn Learning Library and my website, makeappi.com.